so if you go through the study material then you will find that uh, we are going to discuss today as a personality of the buddha that why buddha is called as a buddha and why what are the qualities through which he became very much famous among the religious philosophers as well as guides of all religions so we'll discuss in a very brief manner that what are the special characteristics of personality of buddha there are so many names of the buddha if you go through that buddha is known as bhagava sugato lokvidu purush dhamma sarathi tathagat samma sambuddh so if you go through the chanting of any mangal gatha by the reverend monks venerable monks you will find that they start that iti piso bhagava arha samma sambuddho vijja charan sampanno sugato lokvudi purush dhamma sarathi iti piso bhagava so there are nine special attributes or the qualities through which buddh has become the buddh there are so many qualities of the buddh buddh is not only a an enlightened person who has got uh, the knowledge the supreme knowledge or uh, buddhahood at the bodhi tree at uh, bodh gaya but there are other special qualities through which uh, his personality became very much famous among the people of the world so we will discuss in a very brief manner that why he is called as bhagava he is called as bhagava or bhagwa he is not as a the lord in the sense of hinduism where lord is the almighty god but here he bhagava he he is uh, there is a dhatu bharv bhag dhatu plus one pratyay suffix is the one and then it becomes a bhagwa that literally bhagwa is a person who has broken all, all the process of repeated existence jisne bhavchak parampara ko nash kar diya one who has broken all the repeated existence that is called as bhagwa it is there is another sense of bhagwa also that one who has killed the rag dvesha moha hinsati tavati uh, uh, saranam that uh, one who has gone to the refuge of the buddha dhamma and sound and that uh, here saran is not uh, you can say surrendering to uh, uh, almighty god but uh, here saran is in the sense of uh, surrendering to someone in anticipation of getting the good qualities of the a person so here uh, we have discussed also uh, in our earlier uh, class that here buddham saranam gachami dhammam saranam gachami sangham saranam gachami so here saran is not in the sense of refuge but here in the sense of that i am coming to you in getting the qualities of you people one who goes to the buddha he refuses to the buddha it means that he is going to the buddha for getting the good qualities of the buddha in the same way there are some qualities of the dhamma and there are qualities of the sangha also so in that sense he is called as bhagava that one who has broken the rag dvesh moha hatred antipathy and ignorance that person is called as bhagava arha why he is called as arha that he is called as arha that one who has killed all the enemies like rag dvesh moha then he is called as arhat or arha samma sambuddho that one who has got the perfectly enlightened sugat sugat is one who has gone well that one who has gone the Uh, gone well in the sense that one who has achieved a state of a eternal bliss nibbana one who has got the enlightenment in that way 
and he, one who has again there is a sense of tathagat there are so many meanings of tathagat given by acharya buddh ghosh in the commentary of dikhnikai sumal sumangal bilasani so there are eight you can say attributes through which a person is called as tathagat tathagat that one who has come uh, well one who has gone well in that sense it is called tathagat one who has known the truth tath agat gat that one who has known the reality the four noble truth uh, the dukha mariya satcham dukha samudaya ari satcham dukha nirodha mariya satcham dukha nirodha gamuni patipadariya satcham in that sense it is called as tathagat lok vidu that one who knows the lok lok means that is the loko ti sansaro sansaro ti bhavashak parampara so here one who knows the lok there are three types of lok sankhar lok bhajan lok sattva lok in uh, available in our pali text also but here lok is loko ti sansaro sansaro ti bhavashak parampara that uh, the process of repeated existence is called as uh, लोक सो वन हु नोज द लोक संखार लोक सत्य लोक भाजन लोक सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ मिली लोक बट अकॉर्डिंग टू अभिधम इफ यू गो थ्रू द टेक्स्ट ऑफ अभिधम यू विल फाइन देर आर अदर काइंड ऑफ द लोक ऑल्सो सो विल डिस्कस इन कोर्स ऑफ आवर रीडिंग ऑल्सो सो पुरुष धम्म सारथी that one who is the charioteer of the all the men and the uh, human beings in that sense that one who tames all the you can say persons then he, he is called as a pus dhamma sarathi so there in that way these are the qualities through which a buddhi is and if you go through the igatpuri vipassana research institute there are about to more than 100 names of the buddha the qualities of the buddha which are available in our book and a small book has been also prepared and there are so many names of the buddha and this shows the personality of the buddha because of the qualities of these uh, persons a buddha is called as a buddha a buddha is called that one who has got the knowledge that uh, this is the suffering there is a cause of suffering there is a cessation of suffering and there is a path which leads towards the cessation of suffering so in that sense he, he is called as buddha buddha is a person uh, it is made up of root buddha buddha means to know there is a pratyay here a uh, and then there is a pardhuhe bhave thane and in that sense he if the word becomes a buddha that a person who is enlightened one so in that sense it is called as enlightenment so we will discuss that how the pali text throw light on the personality of a buddha buddha is not you can say a person who has only shown a path but there are so many qualities how he talks with a farmer how he talks with a person who is a very wicked person named as anguli mal and he also meets a person who is very intellectual like sundari kumar dwaj so there are so many brahmanas who were in intellectuals at that time also so how he tackles all those persons these are the some of the qualities and other heretic teachers we had also discussed that there were six contemporary teachers or there were six uh, tarthik teachers at the time of 6th century bc also how he became more famous than other teachers also so these are some of the uh, points which i have given in the our your reading material so one by one we will discuss that how buddh is known in our pali text as well as in other text also so if you know that he was a 
son of a royal family the king is gudhodana and mother mahamaya and he was having all you can say royal facilities to look after for a boy so how he has a, a, the things we are also known that how the four nimittas were responsible for renouncing the household life for siddhartha gautam also and how the pro, the problem which were prevalent at that time and how these were uh, so if you go through the uh, the pali text then you you will see that how he has taken the risk and how he has uh, given the answer of all those problems and uh, we also know that the buddha says that i preach only two things that there is a suffering and there is a cessation of suffering dwe me bhikkhave deshe me dukham cha dukh nirodham cha buddha says that i preach only two things that there is the suffering and there is a cessation of suffering so in that way he had started a concept and we also know that how after getting enlightenment and how he came at sarnath rishipatan mrigdao and he preached dhamachak pavatan katha or dhamachak pavatan sut to his five fold monks panchavagya bhikkhu and he preached dhamachak pavatan sut and in course of his preaching he preached the four noble truth and eight fold path and we have also discussed in our previous class that he has asked a person who has renounced his household life that there are two extremes due ant these two extremes cannot be followed by a person who has renounced the household life and these are called as association related with the sensual pleasure that is kamesu kam sukhli kan yogo and athkal mathan yogo that association with the self mortifications and in course of time he says that in between these two there is a middle path madhyama patpada and which gives wisdom to the which gives eye to the wisdom and light to the wisdom paiya utpadi aloko utpadi like that it has been said in the text so we see that how and he also asked and uh, how the uh, we have also discussed that uh, how the sang was formed when we, with the you know, five fold monks along with the buddha and uh, yas friend uh, 54 friends of the yas kulputta how the 61 persons formed the sang and buddha asked that uh, not two of you will go in the same directions but it will go in another directions a person will go to the another village and another bhikkhu will go to the another village so that all of the human beings can get a state of eternal bliss they can remove the suffering so in that way he has asked his followers not to go both of you in one directions and we are also aware if you go through that buddha also in chulbag there is a reference that some of the monks brahmin converted monks yamel and tamel these were the two brahman converts who approached to the buddha and they asked buddha that the teachings of the buddha may be translated into other language that is the chandasa so buddha become very much angry and he asked that yo chandaso arupeya apati dukkatassa anu janami bhikkave sakai nirutiya budvachanam paryapuni tuti buddha asked that who so ever translates the teachings of the buddha in the chandasa language that is the sanskrit language that will be a offense and that 
it will be great you can say offense also and he asked that oh monks i allow you to sakai nirutya bodu parya punitum ti bodu vachanam padya punitum ti that is the teachings of the buddha bodu vachan may be translated in its own language that is the in notes so here sakai nirutya means that magadhi language the language of the magad in which buddha spoke to the common mass so buddha also adopted the language of the common people ta magadhi mool bhasha naray adi kapika brahmano chasu talapa sambuddha chaopi bhasare buddha says that this magadhi is the original language from the very beginning of the creation of the human beings and buddha and the small baby who have taken birth they speak in that language that is the magadhi language so magadhi is nothing but the language of the magadha and in which buddha spoke so buddha became very much popular because of adopting the magadhi language and that is why buddha says that my teachings may be translated in its own language sakai nirutiya budvachanam parya punitunti so that is the one of the qualities of the buddha that he adopted the language of the people in preference to that of scholars and philosopher chandas was the language of the intellectuals or the you can say brahmanas people those who were uh, intellectually or philosophically sound so buddha did not allow his followers to adopt the language of the chandas or the sanskrit so he asked that to adopt the language of the common people again uh, we know that uh, buddha was uh, very much uh, educationist also here uh, education means that is the sikha or vinay he was the person who gave the teachings of the vinay what is vinay we can see in the words of the acharya buddha goes that vivid visheshanaya ta vinete chakaya vachanam vinath binu vinathe vinayat viduhi ayam viniyo viniyo priyakhatam in defining the term vinay he says that it is prescribing the several norms or rules related with the physical and the vocal activities like panati pata adinna dana kameshu mikshachara musa vada pisuna vacha parusa vacha sampalapa this is called as vinay so here buddha was the great educationist in the sense of making discipline to all the persons and he was asking all the human beings to follow the teachings related with the uh, you can say uh, education so that how a person is being uh, disciplined so here sikha or education is in the sense of vinay here vinay is also in the sense of that how a person uh, trains himself so that is why vinay is called as in the sense of sikha or siksha so here whenever buddha also says that vinay is the backbone of all the teachings so uh, that is why it is also said that vinay uh, is the Mm, code of conduct for all the monks and nuns also and that is why later on 227 rules for the monks and 311 rules for the nuns were prescribed by the book by the buddha in the form of parajika and pachitya and we are knowing that the in the, the binapitak there are five books like mahavagga chulavagga parajika pachitya and parivar so parajika and pachitya discusses all the 227 rules 
as well as a 311 rules respectively for the monks and the nuns which have been divided under the eight or seven headings beginning from the parajika till the sekhiya dhamma so we are not going so he was a great and here binay is in the sense of sikha that is sikhit abatena sikha that sikha or education is in the sense of repetitions that which makes trained what is the training here there are three types of training that is the seal samadhi and paya there are three steps we have also discussed that how, what are the three steps that is the seal samadhi and paya so here by following the three steps a person can get a state of eternal bliss and in visuddhi mag acharya uh, buddh ghos also says that there are three kinds of sikha that is the adi seel sikha adi chit sikha and adi paiya sikha so in that sense there are three kinds of sikha that is the adi seel sikha adi chit sikha and adi paiya sikha so uh, due to these three types of sikha both is called as great educationist among all the philosophers of the world and due to following this uh, uh, adisil adichit or adipanya he is known as a great educationist so again next point we are going to discuss that how he was having the positive approach towards the life of problems and we have seen that uh, uh, the life is full of suffering also and that is why it is, there is a first noble truth that dukkha mariya satyam that there is a, a, a noble truth which is called as suffering and in defining the suffering buddha also says that jati pi dukkha jara pi dukkha maranam pi dukkham api sampayogo dukkho pi vipayogo dukkho yam pi kshamtam na lapti tam pi dukkham sankhitena pancho padan khandhati dukkha buddha says that to take birth is the you can say suffering and there are becoming old is also suffering having a disease is also suffering and association with the undesired persons is also called as suffering and separation from the loved persons or the you can say very near and dear persons is also called as suffering and the things whatever we wish to have we do not get it and that is also called as suffering and we, in a very brief manner sankhitena pancho padan khandhati dukha that aggregates related with the you can say pancho padan that is the five aggregates a desire the great grasping related with the five aggregates is also called suffering to come again and again in this process of repeated existence in this lok bhavchak parampara it is also called as suffering so life is full of suffering and we have to see that how we have to tackle the problems and he has shown the path through the eight fold path and he has that how the suffering can be removed through the eight fold path so in that sense he is he is he called as adhigam upayo he is a person who has shown for the how the there is there is a means to get a state of eternal bliss or the salvation or the vishuddhi and how it can be removed and how in the other you can say the traditions there are superstitions or there are some legends or some things how this can dogmas can be removed so through the teachings of the buddha we also get the positive is a approach towards that again 
we see that uh, there are so many dogmas uh, in the uh, all the religions also buddha as a teacher he has avoided all the dogmas and uh, buddha also said that there is no any almighty god everything is dependent on some cause and conditions whatever thing there is the happening of any event or any thing that is dependent on some cause and conditions so the dogma the superstitions by taking and we have also gone through that uh, under the uh, uh, six contemporary teachers which are uh, Uh, available in samanya phala sutta of dignikaya how buddha has given the problems to solve the problems and we have seen that how the superstitions that if a person kills human beings and by taking a bath in the ganges river he thinks that all my sins have been washed away by taking oblation by taking any yagya a person who thinks that all my sins have been removed these are the superstitions or these are by performing the rites and rituals all uh, our sins and the immoral actions will be washed away and if a person thinks that there is no any uh, merits or demerits if a person uh, gives any charity or if a person kills any living being there is no any demerit or any you can say punya so these were the superstitions at that time at the time of the 6th century bc and we find that how the buddha has given all the you can say solution to remove all these things and uh, through the teachings of the buddha available in the dignikaya majhim nikaya sanjukt nikaya in the jata sut also we have seen that in uh, jata sut how a son of deity approaches to the buddha in the mid night when the blessed one was dwelling at this ravasti tavatthi of uh, kushinagar in the present time and then he says that there is a tangle inside there is a tangle outside oh gautam i ask you again and again who can this tangle this tangle then buddha says that by establishing in the path of morality if a person may develop consciousness samadhi or pahiya right understanding then an ardent vikhu who is also sagacious he may this tangle the tangle so this was the we also find in our samjukt nikay in anguttar nikay also there are so many uh, suttas which are discussing about the deliberation uh, uh, deliberate uh, you can say removal of all the sufferings also and how the superstitions and the dogmas can be removed so but the never claims about any infallibility nor demanded any intellectual surrender but the dajnat ask any one to surrender to me uh, himself no, not himself but uh, to the almighty god or to the B- buddha also and buddha also says that uh, i am only the teacher the path uh, by following path any one can get a state of eternal bliss and even buddha says that uh, after my death or mahaparinibbana the my teachings will be your teachers also so in that way we see that how he does not claim any you can say in infallibility or any surrender to the almighty god also so he also separated the essentials from superfluous academic issues so there were so many issues at the time of 6th century bc and how we were high the six contemporary teachers were discussing their philosophical thoughts and how the teachings of the buddha were became more popular in the same way the teachings of the buddha, jainism were or you can say mahavir 
it also became uh, superior but the teachings of the buddha are more rational than the other religions also and the buddhism does not believe in the inclusive theory and buddha is in favor of that all the religions may prosper and he does he didn't ask his followers that do not follow the teachings of the other religious followers but he asked that all persons are free to adopt any thought which may lead towards the cessation of suffering so in that way he is called as a very much a pragmatic very practical and we also know that buddha was a very good physician also like a physician first of all uh, buddha also diagnoses that what is the suffering what is the cause of the suffering and how like a physician he says that uh, what are the things which can remove the you can say suffering also and what are the path and what are the in place of the medicines or therapy a person can get a state of eternal bliss so in that way he is called a very uh, pragmatic or practical thinker or philosopher uh, and due to these qualities buddhi is also very successful Uh, among the all the religious uh, religious uh, philosophers uh, or uh, you can say teachers also there is a uh, sutta which is called as alagop padmantu sutta in majjhimnika which is called as uh, one of the 22nd sutta of majjhimnika and uh, there is a alagop padma sutta alagop padma means there is a snake so uh, there is a simile of that if you um, catch the snake just uh, through his mouth then the snake will bite the hand but if you catch the uh, a snake uh, through the tail then you can control like that and in the same manner buddha also says that i preached just like a raft or kulupamam kulupupamam vikthave desemi nitharana na bin bin thai buddha says that oh monks i preach the my teachings just like a boat or you can say raft and just like a raft raft through the raft or the boat a person crosses from one shore of the or one bank of the river to the other bank of the river and after crossing to to the other side of the river the person does not get associated with the raft or the boat in the same way buddha also says that just from the state of the suffering to the state of eternal bliss it is just like a kulupam bhikkave desemi bin nitharana na bin vitha just getting rid of the suffering not getting associated with the suffering so just like by crossing the raft you can go to the other shore of the river and just forget about the you can say raft or the boat so that in algotpomo sut buddha has come you can say and here dhamma has been compared to a boat that it is for the purpose of the crossing of her here crossing means here the river is in the sense of bhavchak parampara process of repeated existence and not for grasping not for you can say having a desire a strong desire related with the panch khandhas 
that is the rupa khand vedana khand sanya khand sankhar khand bhiyan khand so here there are panch khandaj so he said that not for the grasping but for crossing over from a state of suffering from a state of process of repeated existence to the state of eternal bliss in the same way there is a sutta in sanjukt nikaya how the text in some of the suttas are throwing light on the personality of the buddha so in the such sanjukt sutta there is a uh simile of the simsapa grove also and here it is also said that how the lay a handful of the leaves are sowing in the sense of the handful of the knowledge also the buddha has taught us and these uh, you can say And the knowledge, the handful of the knowledge, are in the sense of beneficial for solving the problem, the main basic problem of the human uh, sufferings or the experiences. So here there is a simile which has been given in the such sanjukt of uh, sanjukt nikaya. So again we are. saying there is a text uh, in which a buddha has given a simile of the uh, you can say wounded persons suppose a person hmm, uh, gets uh, suffering through the piercing of any you can say axe in the hand or in the any part of the body then the person who has been wounded he asked that let me uh, chalk out that uh, who has wounded me then i will get the you can say solution or i will ask my doctor to get cure of my you can say suffering until unless i do not get the uh, you can say knowledge that who has pierced my body then until then i cannot get the uh, doctor's uh, advice so he has given that if a person will uh, know about the cause of the piercing of the suffering then his suffering will be not cured but it is necessary that if you have got any suffering try to remove that suffering immediately so in that way he has a, that he, there is a simile if you go through the your uh, reading material you will find that if a person who were pierced through by a poison arrow uh, and his relations call in a surgeon and the man said i will not have this arrow pulled out until i know who the man is who has wounded me so this is the you can say simile which has been given the parable of wounded man in our text also so equally uh, there are other you can say superstitions and miraculous things which are happening in our day to day life also so buddha uh, was uh, very much that don't get involved with the superstitions or supernatural or the miracles power and we know that sometimes buddha also uh, performs the uh, miracles as well as supernatural things in uh, so there are six types of supernatural things like dibb sot dibb chakshu dibb parchit bijanan and uh, so there are uh, so many persons who have the miraculous power but buddha does not allow any one to follow the miraculous power or he, you can say the idhij or in sanskrit it is called the riddhi so buddha says that uh, and uh, there is uh, an example also uh in the theri gatha 
that uh, once upon a time Kisa got me a theory when she was a uh, uh, lay woman, she lost her son. We'll, uh, there is a famous story related with the Kisa got me theory that uh, how she has lost her son and she became very, you can say, mad with the suffering of uh, demise, with the demise of uh, his son also. And when she came to know that uh, the Buddha has come, then she approached to the Buddha and she asked that let by the miraculous power or supernatural power, my son be become alive. So Buddha has given one example also that, uh, okay, I will agree with you. And uh, first of all, you go to any uh, house of the uh, family where anyone who has not, uh, where anyone no, uh, anyone who has not got the death, from that house you take some, you can say, the beams. Uh, then she goes to the every house and tries to get the, the you can say, the some of the uh, beams where anyone who has not died in that, in the family members of that house also. And then she realized later on and by going through all the houses that uh, all things are subject to impermanence sabbe sankhara nicha and buddha was successful in making a realization of this fact to the kisa gautami that uh, one who has died he, he, he cannot become alive so in that way Kisa Gautami became follower of the Buddha and she was ordained later on and she became nun also. So how the, the teachings he has given in a very practical or very practical way so we can go through his teachings also. Next is that he contrived situation who could drive home the truth what he taught. So the Buddha also says that so there are two extremes which cannot be followed by a person who has renounced the household life. So this is the that a person should not get involved in the worldly pleasures as well as the pleasure which is being experienced by our five senses. And there is another extreme which cannot be followed by a person who is the association with the self mortifications at kill mathan yoga. So in that way, Buddha has shown the whole things in that way. So this is the thing we can stop here. And in the next class, we'll discuss some of the remaining points related with this you can say the personality of the Buddha, how some of the suttas are also feeling about uh, the qualities of the Buddha and how Buddha says that uh, these are quite uh, beneficial for the cause of the uh, human humanity and how um, uh, a person from the state of suffering to the state of eternal bliss can get uh, uh, so this is the path made. So let us finish here.